Hello, and welcome back to Nova Arcana with Brian. Untold Stories number seven by Render XR. I have done a bit of work off camera. Hey, Ark. Um, late night, but I went ahead and finally used some books. Uh, I did some repairs on the boiled blade and made a new iron pickaxe. And so I have inventory that's ready to go. And I was also getting extremely lost in the Faraday Passage. And so I made a path that shows me the way to the dungeon after the Henge, and a path that shows me the way to some new darkness that I still haven't explored. But also upstairs at the railroad, there was something that I missed up there, and that's the first one that I wanna to do today. So that's where we're gonna start things out today. You'll recall that back when I was first in Candlebit Castle, I could see above us, and we'll be able to see it momentarily, a railway system that was just kind of up in the sky and so I built my way up there and then eventually discovered that the Bastalt Passage wound all the way around the castle and eventually ended up over at that rail system as well. When I had built my own way up here I had just built this and when we explored it together on camera I don't know a few episodes ago it was the case that I went down this way, and that's where it connected up to the end of a stalled passage. And I went over this way, and it just ended in some resources over there, which we mostly mined up. And then over here, it fell into a hole, and I went down into the hole, and I was disappointed to discover there was nothing in the hole. But then, <laughs> I noticed that there was some light peeking out over here. Well, mostly I noticed it when other people noticed it in their videos that I was watching. So, let's go over here and see what's here. Oh, there's even a sign up there. Oh, and this is just going to be a dramatic overlook? Oh, this is a dramatic overlook to the beginning of the map. Uh, so there's the first henge uh, that was right at the beginning, and there's actually a shortcut that goes back to the monument over there, and here's the first bridge that we crossed to get the first tree that was up there. All right, very good job. Render's also good at this. Uh, Vex was good at this too, or whatever, like the uh, dramatic overlook of something that we've seen before. There's some string down there, but I presume it's just related to vines and different things. Okay, pretty cool. Um, this is extremely vertical going up here, but I guess we can hop up it. And right now it doesn't look like this area has like spawners and traps. So what is this? Bonus area number two, bygone mines. Okay, the previous bonus area is where I got the, the star spell. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think I saw potion effects on some of these spiders, maybe. I'm not entirely certain about that. And I don't love having to break. The bolter blade is a very good sword. I think I'm gonna switch to, hmm. Let's do this. I wanna have a less good sword on the bar if I'm gonna be chopping through a lot of spider webs. And it's usually the case that some kind of mine shaft area covered in spider webs is going to need such a thing. All right, so let's start going through here and then, hmm, I wonder how flat this area is going to be because it's starting off very flat. And I was thinking to myself, if I encountered it, okay, now it's going out here or there's other places to go, I'm not sure. I was thinking to myself, if I encountered a very flat area, that would be a good place to use the Gale Charm and right now, hmm, that part looks flat. I want to look at, there is a branch over here that I didn't go down, but I might want to switch my charms out. Uh, also, hello, spider. All right, great. So, branch over here. Oh boy. All right, that's right. Get confused by the light. Spiders get passive when it gets bright. And we got to use that to our advantage. All right, but obviously we had already spawned a number of guys over here, but this seems to be just a dead end. Okay. And this guy might also get passive and lose track of us, or maybe not. Let's go ahead and break that. Hey, buddy. Okay. Nice, easy start to the area. Um, do I want to go back to the Gale Charm? It'd be nice if I had, like, an Ender Chest or access to these things more easily. I guess for now I won't, just because of the fact that every area 
<laughs> has been pretty large in this map. And so I'll probably like run out of torches and have to go back somewhere in the middle and then I can reevaluate. But for now, I will try to not heal so that we get the bonus speed. Uh, whenever we're at full soul, we have a speed bonus. And speed seems super good in this area if it's going to be nice and flat. That is my that is my reasoning. That's my logic. Okay, here's the first possibilities of some non-flatness. And let me actually peek up here. Okay, yep. That's fine. He didn't even deal damage to me, although he did explode this thing. There was a gold pickaxe and a gold bar and a normal pickaxe. Oh no, it was showing me a crafting recipe, I think. Um, okay, so let's see if we can infer. Maybe it wasn't. Darn. Blew up that chest. Uh, if it were a crafting recipe, then I think I would be able to use the new Minecraft learn the recipes feature or whatever. So I want to check that out in a minute. But first off, let's kill the spider and let's also get rid of the spider spawner that must be here since there's a bunch of spiders. Great. And now let's take a brief moment while I feel nice and safe uh, to look at this thing. And this thing? How do I search? If I say pickaxe, uh, it's okay if it uses the crafting table. I just want to learn recipes. Um, hmm. Oh, that shows all. Oh, but I'm not in a crafting table right now, and I didn't bring a crafting table with me. Okay. I know how Minecraft works. Kind of. I think. I've not played a lot of Minecraft lately. But I'm fairly sure if I look in a crafting table, and then go into the recipe book, then it will show me all the 3x3 three three recipes. So if I do this, and then do this, and then search for pick, and then go to gold pick, Three gold, okay. This is what it was showing me. So three gold bars on two sticks. Oh, but that's just the normal recipe. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be like some special recipe or something. Blackstone, I don't know what blackstone is. That's some new thing. Okay. Um, embarrassment, I don't know what I'm doing. I do think I might've missed something important in that chest that blew up. Uh, because we've had previous treasure chests where render spells out a recipe uh, in kind of the order of items in the treasure chest. Okay, I see that there's a hole in the floor here. And it looks like it's just a hole in the floor. Uh, it also looks like the floor is becoming less continuous. <laughs> All right, so there's a danger. I guess since I'm holding a shield, I should use it. Okay. Great. And I'm a little bit nervous. Okay. There's that spawner about where the spawners are going to be hidden in this kind of narrow passage. Uh, but obviously right around the blind spot behind these pillars is a good spot, for example. And the terrain is becoming less flat. Okay, obviously we got creepers over here. And now would be a good time to heal. Because, reasons. I think I should be able to earn some souls from these guys. Although, let's see, that guy's gonna walk around. If I knock you back once. I was trying to decide if I wanted these guys to blow up, but now I think the answer is no. Okay, I would like that soul. Thank you. All right, and now that I've got all my soul, I don't mind spending some arrows to finish you off. Ouch. They're dropping from very high up. Okay, that was important to notice. Now I don't mind if he does that. 
And what just happened over there? I guess it was something that I picked up. Let me do this. And let me just assume that I'm going to run by and perhaps it's going to... Yeah, it's not going to lead me back around. Where I could get up into the sky and see where that is. So I guess I do have to build up there. That's going to be kind of a pain in the neck. All right. But we can do what we gotta do. Ah, uh, creepers. You guys stay down there. And I, oh, there's like a, okay, like a cross beam thing going on over here. Um, let's do this. Just in case there's somebody else walking around over there. Let's destroy the creepers. And then since we're up here, let's maybe switch directions and go this way. This looks like a cave-in, and the last time that- oh, there's a chest back here. Last time it was a cave-in, it was truly a dead end. Uh, this chest is obviously set up in such a way that it could be a trap chest, and I wouldn't see it um, from the direction I'm coming at it, so... Let's attempt to just see the front. Okay, now I don't think it's trapped. Okay, that's pretty weak sauce in terms of equipment. Um, I will take the shield. But the rest of this is not really things that I need. And definitely not the stuff that's going to clutter my inventory, but I guess it fits in my inventory for the most part, so... All right, I'll quit complaining. Good job, Render. Way to give me a chest that fit in my inventory. Um, there's a waterfall here, and there were creepers here. I guess that was still the creepers who were spawning from the spawner that I just broke. And any of them who ended up in this water pool would eventually kind of be pushed off by that as opposed to needing to look for a different spawner to explain the existence of these creepers. Uh, since it's a CTN map, the rules are pretty much you have to look in the waterfall. And there's amethyst there, and I think there's likely to be more amethyst there, probably. So I'm going to get rid of the water right there, even though we're spawning spiders. And I'm going to hop up here and see if there's a ton of amethyst straight back here. And the answer is no. There's just the one. All right. That's okay. It still makes me feel slightly rewarded for having looked at the top of the waterfall. All right, we need more torches on the bar so that we can light things up. It's getting very narrow again. The spider seems to be caught, and it's good for me. And, hmm, okay. This, I guess, is another cave in dead end or is the amethyst trying to convince me to dig no i think it's cave in dead end all right um so then i guess the next way to go is back over here so that was a dead end this way we blocked off and so what do we find over here we find I'm going to try to be careful and look around all the corners. Okay, we find cave spiders. Congratulations, cave spiders. You have been found deserving. Deserving of the attention of an arrow. Okay. Um, now would be a good time to actually buff up. So let's drink a mushroom stew. Let's eat one of these, and then let's have oops, a splash potion of health on the bar in case we get uh, poisoned and into a bunch of trouble. Because cave spiders, in a map where it's non-trivial to heal, <laughs> cave spiders can be a real problem. Okay, the giant floor here is very scary. I see another cave spider. Darn it. All right. And I'm worried that there's going to be some kind of concrete powder or some kind of gravity block that blends in with the clay that I'm not super familiar with. And so I'm trying to be very vigilant should such a thing appear. Because prize gravity block seems like it could be a thing right there. And also, oh boy. Drink one of those. What was I starting to say? And also what? Um, 
Oh yeah, the other thing is clay does not have a lot of blast resistance. And so if a creeper were to explode there, and it turns out to just be one thick filled with clay, that also seems like it could be uh, problematic. There's glass over there, which is interesting. And I hear a skeleton. And OK, looks like there's something I missed down there. So let's do this. Let's come over to this side. There was a sound. I was near the top of the map, and I was hearing rain on the surface, I think, is what I was just hearing. I kind of wasn't sure if the sound I was hearing was something from in real life. Oh, there's an emerald over there. Nice. Uh, something from in real life or something from this area. But now I'm fairly certain that it was from this area. So we'll go back and check that out in a minute. But first, oh, wow. And another spell? This seems great. Um, and I don't think this is trapped. Let's take a look what emerald we get. It is emerald seven. Nice. Those are coming in order. That's terrific. And over here, do I have room in my inventory? I'm not sure what happens when you get this if you don't have room in your inventory. So let's discard one feather in order to pick up. Flask of absorption. Five minutes, four soul stars. Okay, so presumably this will give me two extra hearts. Um, I'm not willing to use it right now. We can test it back out at the monument. That could be useful for running into a place. Wow, wow indeed. Um, all right. Also, this just looks cool. Uh, I'm not sure. What block is that? Is it something retextured or something normal? Glazed terracotta, it might be the normal glazed terracotta. It looks very pretty. Um, and I see some amethyst over here, which I want. Tell me what you want, which you really, really want. Okay, so I went... Is this it? No, there's more over here. Also, hello, spawner that I did not previously break. Uh, wait a minute. Why are there torches there? I don't think I placed those torches. I think this is a lie. Um... Oh, dig for shortcut. Before I do that, I don't want to lose track of the fact that I thought I heard rain from the surface of the world up here. Yes, I definitely hear rain sounds here. We are at Y of 244, so the top of the map is obviously up there, and that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Just wanted to verify that before I left this area and forgot. Also want to verify that this is an amethyst that belongs in my inventory. Ha ha, it's been verified. Great. Okay, dig for shortcut. The words are upside down. Um, actually, hmm, how did Render do that? I guess there might be like Unicode font or something that has upside down text. Oh, we're back at the entrance. I think that was everything. I'm going to run back through the long way, uh, but I think we might have seen everything, and this might have been actually the shortest area that there has been on the entire map so far. Uh, there's another beautiful vantage point. So let's take a look down here. And if there were a safe place to jump into the water onto the bridge, that would actually be the quickest way back. Uh, while we're up here, OK, so we kind of circled around this ledge should always take advantage of looking out from these vantage points because sometimes you see things that you haven't seen before. And render is very good at hiding things that you only notice from certain vantage points that are kind of, I don't know, intended to be found by the player throughout the map. But yeah, we got to the end boundary over there. We're obviously at the top of the map and so things couldn't go any higher because we heard the roof of the map. Ooh. Okay, I forgot how narrow I had made this. That's one of the places that I was trying to get the mycelium from the Enderman uh, early on in the map. Some guys on the floor, right. I left some guys on the floor over here as well. Guys being amethyst. All right. Great success. Let's take a look from this vantage point. 
So here's the little tree farm that I had originally set up when my base was at intersection one. And there was a piece of podzol where I was growing some mushrooms. Podzol was also delivered to me by an enderman. You can definitely kind of see what would be the top of the map up there. I'm kind of curious, since there is open sky here, we could actually get up on top of the map. And usually there'd be some kind of Easter egg there. So let's use a non-great pickaxe and just kind of dig my way up to the top and take a peek at the ceiling of the map. This should only take a moment because we're already at Y of 242. So I think we can only go up like another 10 blocks or something. And it was raining at the start of the map, and so I wonder if the weather is permanent. Okay, there's actually bedrock here, but we're very close to an open sky area. So I can just dig off to the side and we'll find it. And I think at the very least there will be a sign up here. I think knowing render, it's more probable that there'll be a treasure chest or two up here. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Okay. Oh! <laughs> I did not know why it didn't occur to me that there could be barrier blocks up here. And that's, of course, there had to be barrier blocks up here because we've had open sky, but it hasn't been raining on the bridge. Okay. So, despite that, there could still be up on this topmost ledge, possibly a treasure chest. There is the lookout that we were just standing at before. That was kind of at the end of the bygone mines. And I don't think I see a treasure chest up here. And that's as far as I'm going to go out here. All right, so we took a look. We didn't find anything too amazing. I can always replace a wooden bowl. I prefer to have the cobblestone, I think. So we'll get that. All right, but that's a great success to start things off. 20 minutes, area down. We got an emerald and a new spell that I am interested in checking out. All right, cobblestones become one with my inventory. Thank you. All right. And yeah, I should stay on camera so that we can actually see what this crazy absorption spell does. Actually, I guess if I think this is safe... Oh, hold on. <laughs> Here is the thing that I failed to notice. So let's see. We already got what I think would be the main goals of this area. So what would be hidden down here in this area that kind of backtracks and that you could easily miss? If I were render, what kind of loot would I put down here? And the answer is, I'm not sure. Uh, this guy is very cleverly hiding right behind the spawner. And so if I break the spawner, he's going to come rushing at me. Oh, and I don't have my best pickaxe on my bar anymore. Oh, no, he wasn't behind the spawner. He's up in the corner. I'm not sure where he is. Uh, let's get the good pickaxe on the bar in case I need it again. It looks like there might just be the one chest here. So despite the fact that the area is now a little bit bigger, than I was originally giving it credit for. I do think this might be the end for the second time. Gravel on the floor is suspicious. Can't tell what block the treasure chest is sitting on. Um, it is sitting on gravel, so I should expect the gravel to fall. This is in kind of a tightly... Uh, an area that could easily trap the player, so I'm pretty sure the correct thing to do, and once again, I shouldn't be using up the good pickaxe now, is to dig an escape route through the wall in a direction that is not the direction that the map maker has given me. And I thought this was going to bring us back out to the entrance, but apparently it doesn't. How far away was the entrance? Like, it just went around the corner here. If I dig, like, two blocks to the left, I should find it. Oh, I don't even have to dig two blocks to the left. I found it. I just stopped one block too early. Great. Okay. I don't have any space in my inventory. And so if there are things that I want to retrieve from the chest that is almost certainly going to be trapped, 
then I better have some space in my inventory. So let's quickly dump off some things. I keep that on me. Now let's dump off the emerald and the spell too. Okay. And now I want to try to grab all the stuff and run. Uh, that's not very exciting stuff. And it also wasn't a trap. <laughs> okay. Um, still, Render has done a very good job in this map of making me not guess what the traps are going to be, I guess is the short way of describing it. Uh, so good job, Render, on that. You've managed to have a bunch of traps in the map but have them designed in such a way that they defeat the expectations of the normal CTM player. Um, what is this? And so I appreciate that. Oh, dig for the shortcut. Right, this was a shortcut back to the exit. Okay, I forgot already that we had that. Okay, but that was a nice short area. Um, yeah, at this point I will just be walking back I already went up down there wondering why there was nothing at the end of this rail line. So yeah, we'll get back to the monument and check out what this absorption thing does. Actually, I guess since we're going back to the monument, I can go ahead and spend my soul stars on it. So flask of absorption. If I were to drink this, I get five minutes of, let me turn this thing off, five minutes of absorption, which has given me two extra hearts, two yellow hearts. And so, before you go into an area, if you were able to replenish your soul, you could have two extra hearts right at the start, which would not last very long because eventually you'd take a little bit of damage and those hearts would go away. So it's a rather minor buff. I don't know that it's one that we're going to use that frequently. Since we're here, does it stack? Um, oh, with the golden apples? That's a great question. I'm guessing no, since it just said absorption one. And indeed, the answer is no. So basically it also doesn't stack with golden apples. So I can't remember how much of this I've shown on camera, uh, but basically I brought some mycelium here. I got it to spread. I would noticed when we first came to the monument that it was a mushroom field biome over in the bottom left, which means that these guys could naturally spawn on mycelium. And they did, and I've been starting to breed them up. And Actually, yeah, while we're on camera, this would be a great place to kill a couple of them and see what stake does. So this is emerald number seven. So let's do this. Ta-da! That is a super loud sound, giving me... Uh, and actually, before I kill a mushroom, let's get some wheat. Um... Yeah, so here's my little wheat farm. And so we'll breed up the mushrooms and we'll kill a couple of them and we'll cook up some steak and we'll see what buff, if any, steak gives the player. Uh, the wheat is what I want in my inventory right now. That I don't need right now. Uh, I do need to replant these though, gosh darn it. I do need this right now. Inventory management. If I were to ever make a CTM map in Minecraft again, which I don't think I would do, uh, but if I were to ever help someone else make a CTM in Minecraft again, uh, which I might do because I do programming -y kind of stuff sometimes, I would definitely develop an inventory system. Like there haven't been any ender chests in this map and I'm not sure if there's gonna be any that would just utilize the ender chest uh, in a way that allows the player to exchange like two full sets of inventory so that basically you can double the size of your inventory and there's some kind of gesture you can do in your inventory to swap your current inventory with your ender chest inventory because the inventory in Minecraft is just not large enough, even in vanilla Minecraft, uh, but also in the CTM. There's just not enough space in your inventory to do the things you want to do and inventory management's really annoying. Shulker boxes, I guess, could compensate a tiny bit. We just heard a zombie there, which implies that there's some dark space nearby. So I need to go check on said dark space. Oh, he spawned up out there. Interesting. I hear a baby zombie too. So I can't remember if I have gone up here before. I know no leaf clover went up here. 
And I thought it was, yeah, like slabs and things. Uh, but only parts of it are slabs, and so parts of it are dark. Okay. Uh, also, hey, since we're up here, thank you, zombies. You led me to amethysts. So yeah, I was already, like, even before they added all those new features, Ark, like, I was already working on a system for that for 1.13 Exploration and Tactics before um, Mojang went and ruined everything. Um, so, like, even without all those features, I had ideas of ways to do it uh, and had some partial implementations working. And, uh, yeah, then Mojang went and ruined everything. But, yeah, with the new features that they have now, like, obviously, the way the totems must work uh, in this map, when you die and it saves all of your items or whatever, like, does this have looting on it? It does, so I should use this. All right, so we're going to kill a couple of mushrooms, or maybe just one. Uh, all right, he managed to run away, and I lost track of which one. Which one I hit? There we go. So let's see. I don't need two seeds, and I don't need one leather. Raw beef. Okay, I got a couple of them. That's what I really wanted. Yeah, the custom world generation. When they got rid of the custom world generation. Because basically I had built a good portion of my exploration and tactics around custom world features. And then they removed that feature. Uh, and they did it in the same update where I programmed all that stuff using the new programming. And so, uh, yeah, I was not happy about that. <laughs> Uh, I basically never played Minecraft again, until now. Okay, so we're back home. Uh, I don't need to show inventory management on camera, but what I do need to do while I'm still on camera is see what eating steak does. So let's grab a steak and discover if and what it does. So currently the only effect I have is speed. And steak gives me four minutes of resistance. So it's exactly the same as the mushroom stew. All right. Great. That means I don't have to kill any more of the mushrooms. Um, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same, right? Let's double check. Four minutes of resistance. Great. Okay. So I don't have to kill any of the more of the mushrooms. I could just continue to uh, milk them out here. In fact, I can do that right now. So I brought just a couple over here, and I can just go bloop, and happy mushrooms can help me out with resistance. Uh, but it stacks. No, it replaced the other resistance. Um, so that is great. Okay, so we completed another area. We got a new spell. We got another emerald. And so this is now crossed off the list. And next time we will go back into the Verity Passage and try to get through the rest of the darkness and check out the dungeon that we we're just starting to walk into.